Okay. Hi, everyone. Let's just jump into it. I got a question or rather a statement on my video that said, I always feel ugly. Help me. And I'm going to help you. I have notes and everything. Bust out your notes. Let's get very serious about the subject matter. We don't have a tea today. It's way too cozy warm. And honestly, I want to wear my sweater, which means I'm not also going to drink hot tea and I didn't have time to cool it down. So I'm drinking some H2O. Okay. That's the truth of it. That might sound ugly to you or this bun might be ugly to you, or this sweater might be ugly to you. It's not. It's gorgeous. Look at it. It's gorgeous, right? What is ugly? So I wrote down three categories, mental health, self-confidence, and uh, oh, you're right. You might just be ugly. <laughs> That's the third category. So let's talk about it. That's the physicality. That's the reality facing that we're going to do. So on this channel, if you're new to it, we try to introspect. We try to have a conversation with ourselves in order to become healthier and better. We are not professionals. I didn't go to college. I just lived my life and found my joy. And that's why I'm trying to give you tools today. So when I think about being ugly, first, I face the reality that we all feel ugly. Say it again for the people in the back. We all feel ugly. All of us. Even the hottest person you can think about feels ugly because they're not having a relationship with themselves, their consciousness. We all feel ugly. We feel the pressures of being ugly. We feel the condemnation for features that aren't as pleasing to the majority. We feel like we're never good enough because the bubble you live in, the culture, the background, the family you're born into, the expectations from people around you make you feel that way because you yourself have no confidence in how you look, how you feel, and how you think of yourself. This is why ugliness isn't just physical. It's also your personality. It's also your consciousness and the relationship you're having with it. So, okay, get your notebook out. This is really important. And this is the hard part of ugliness is that it always comes back down to you. Everything does. Yes, people around you might call you ugly. And maybe that's sort of true in a way. Maybe in a lineup of 10 people, you are the ugliest. But what does that even mean when beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Yes, I agree that in a room, we could all rank ourselves with genuinely who we think is the hottest. But ultimately, when we're talking about the consciousness, this is just a body, a little vessel we were born into. Nobody chose how they looked. And honestly, a lot of us are too poor to be hot, right? That's like a saying on the internet. It's true. All of those celebrities, all of those people you're looking at who make you feel bad about them yourself, they're all ugly. They pay to look pretty. Few and far in between, some of them are very pretty. Like Naomi Campbell, beautiful, gorgeous, lovely, love her. Okay, very rare. Ultimately, none of us are really in the majority born with like these perfect genetic features. We're just people who basically learn how to groom. So first and foremost, you have to radically accept that everyone thinks they're ugly. And until you do that, you can't be helped. Because until you can actually look at the most beautiful person in the room and accept that they also cry themselves to sleep because they're not pretty enough, you will never have a balanced relationship with your consciousness in relation to feeling ugly because it's a feeling. It is a feeling to feel ugly. The only time you actually might be considered ugly is in comparison to someone else. Generally speaking, human beings are quite accepting of people's diversity and looks. It's only when pressure is put on them to make fun of someone that I think they naturally do that. I think some features on a person's face can be off-putting to some part of our evolutionary brain, like maybe a really scary scar, or maybe if somebody doesn't have, you know, a nose, or maybe their eyes are taken out, that can be quite shocking to us. But even then, blind people find families, people without noses have girlfriends. Like I see people on the internet all the time that fall in love with people with unique disabilities. Myself, I'm open to that as well. I mean, I'm married, but if I, you know, didn't get married to somebody with a disability, I would have been open to it because I grew up in an environment that didn't judge people for how they looked in that regard. If anything, they judged more superficial things harder because it's weird to judge someone for how they were born. But it's different judging someone for what they've done to their body. It's why we feel justified in judging people with too much plastic surgery or maybe even people who are too skinny or too fat. We feel like you've done it to yourself, so I'm allowed to make fun of you. But the truth is, if you fall in love with a fat person, you still find them beautiful. The truth is, is that you're allowed to be fat and feel beautiful. 
You're allowed to be too skinny and feel beautiful. You're also allowed to do anything you want and feel beautiful. But the truth is, is sometimes even the prettiest don't feel the most confident and sometimes the least prettiest feel very confident in the relationship they're having with their consciousness. So as an example, okay, if you look down on my notes, so there's the mental health perspective of ugliness. I'm depressed. I feel ugly. I have self-loathing. I don't feel good. No matter what I do, no matter what happens, I don't care if I look like Angelina Jolie, I look ugly. That's a distortion that you can get help for. There are professionals in the world. They're called therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists. You can go to people to give you the advice you need, the mental health restructuring you need, or the pills you need to have a better relationship with reality so you're not distorting, right? So first and foremost, you have to ask yourself, am I actually distorting reality? Do I not know what I look like? Then self-confidence. That's how you see yourself in reality. Hey, I know I'm not like uh, the hottest girl in the room, but man, I'm pretty cute. Okay, like, okay, I got that, I got that Arab nose. I got those like kind of cute cheekbones. I don't know, I'm kind of cute. I got no lips, but you know what? My body's rocking. So you know what? I got the confidence. Like I'm not, I'm not the worst. I'm not the best. I'm pretty good. I feel pretty good. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty okay. I'm not like horrible to look at. You know, you like it, you like it. I'm pretty good about that. I have this confidence because one, I take care of myself to the best of my ability and my body works to the best of its ability, minus the fibromyalgia and the chronic health issues. But I mean, it's pretty good. There's no reason to feel bad about my body unless I compare myself to other people, which is sort of ugly. It is sort of ugly to compare yourself to other people. It is sort of weird to say, that girl over there has something I wish I had. And where does that come from? It could be connected to mental health, a lack of confidence, or maybe you're right. Maybe you're just ugly. But what does it mean to be ugly? Now, in order for you to justify that you think you're ugly, I need you to go find five people on the internet that you would qualify as ugly. Because I have people on the scale of one to 10 attractiveness that I would say are probably your two or a three or a four. But at the end of the day, those people find love. Maybe I would even fall in love with one of them, right? Because of their personality. Okay, so what does it mean to be ugly? Write this down. Physical. There's the physical body that we have. Not everyone's born with the perfect features. Like I got gaps in my teeth that definitely as a YouTuber actually make me less watchable. Do you know pretty privilege is such a thing, right? And ugly privilege on YouTube is such a thing. If you're very ugly, you go viral. There are whole YouTube themes of people saying, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. And they go viral because people want to look at them because they're so ugly. And then pretty privilege on YouTube is like, you're so pretty. You have a feature that makes people want to watch you because they want to be you, right? I would sneeze. Oh my God. Ooh. So the irony as a YouTuber who's kind of in the middle is we actually have to have an, something to sell. We actually have to have like a shtick because the truth is, and this is the truth on YouTube, if you're very, very pretty, you're good to go. If you're very, very ugly, you can make a channel off of that. What am I going to make a channel off of? Hi, guys. Welcome to being average. Hi, guys. I'm neither ugly nor hot. I'm in the middle. Hey, guys. Actually, okay, that's, I should make some videos on that. That's pretty funny. But like, you know what I mean? What are you? What are people going to watch? Yeah, you're like everyone else. Say it with me. You're like everyone else. Most people are average. Most people are kind of cute, kind of ugly, right? Oh, look at Adam Driver. He's cute, ugly. He's hot, ugly. Adam Driver is not very hot. He's not very ugly. He's in the middle. And you know how I know that? Because a lot of people think he's either very hot or very ugly or somewhere in the middle. He is neither universally hot, like Brad Pitt is universally hot. People never say Brad Pitt is ugly. Name one person who ever said Brad Pitt is ugly. They might say he's not their type, but is he ugly? No. Okay, he's just hot. That's it. End of story. We're not talking about it. Okay. Like, you just don't get to say he's ugly, right? That's just, like, not a reality. But Adam Driver, lots of people think he's ugly and lots of people think he's hot because you either like him or you don't, right? I think most people are average, which is like, yeah, they're cute. Or they're sort of like a versatile, oh, you're the people either like you or they don't like you, right? So when you fall in the middle and in the average – That's not really the thing that's going to catch people's eye. What's going to catch people's eye, and this is better for you because it's not superficial to some extent because if you're really, really hot, you never know if people are really into you or they're into the status of dating you. Very difficult. You actually have to have, say it with me, personality. That's your attitude, baby. 
You know what's an ugly personality? Somebody who's very negative and pessimistic. Nobody wants to be around a negative Nancy. Oh my gosh, I had a I had a friend of mine who was so pessimistic. Just like the most pessimistic human who ever existed and I was like, "Girl, you have got to get your shit together." This was a boy. But I was like, "You are so grumpy. No girl is going to want to be around you." And he was like, "Well, I just feel like it's unfair and I I look a certain way and because of how I look, no one's going to want to be with me." And to be fair, he grew up a ginger. And growing up ginger at the time he grew up in is pretty difficult. Nobody was attracted to gingers. He really missed his time to be loved as a ginger. And at the same time, like, he's handsome. Everyone gets along with him. He's got a good job, all that stuff, right? And so as he moved into his, like, 30s, he finally got a grip on reality and realized, like, I'm not ugly. I'm ginger. You either like me or you don't. And that's just the truth of it. He's not ugly. He's just a ginger. And people discriminate against redheads unless you're a girl then you can use that to your advantage unless you're a nerdy ginger girl, then that might be questionable. And see, that's the that's the irony is your look is a fad. I remember being a child and being considered unattractive and my body being too big, my butt being too big. And then Kim Kardashian came in with her BBLs and normalized big butts in a way that was digestible to the majority of the world because she was light skinned. And then that created and allowed me to be considered more attractive. And I still am like, I get those comments all the time and I don't mind them because to be honest with you, as a queer woman myself, I also like big booties. So thank you. I very, I get so excited when my partner's like, your butt's getting bigger. And I'm like, stop it. Thank you. But some girls are literally trying to get their butts to be smaller. Everyone is working on their own version of what is attractive. So your personality is wrapped into your confidence. It's wrapped into the relationship you're having with your ugliness. Nobody likes a negative Nancy or somebody who's a liar. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're like, you're very ugly to me right now. Your lying makes you ugly. Your cheating makes you ugly. Like, man, I was into you until I found out you kicked babies like for fun. Oh my gosh, I was so into you until I found out you kicked dogs. Like what people do, their personality is ugly, right? Anyone can be attractive until you find out what they do in their private time. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I was ever attracted to you. Ultimately, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It doesn't matter if you're the hottest person in the world. If we find out you're a horrible person, it's it's very hard for most people to continue finding that attractive. Now they might because they're dysfunctional and in a toxic relationship, it might continue the cycle because they don't want to admit they're dating somebody who's so ugly. But the ugliness at that point isn't physical. It's who the person is. It's their consciousness or the relationship they're having with their consciousness. So of course, character, essence. If their character is out of line, they will look ugly to you. Science has proven as well that if you don't get enough sleep, you will see people uglier than they are. That you will see people angrier and scarier than they are. And so much of our life is, well, we're first, we're all underslept, okay, myself included. Hello, this podcast is late because I'm not keeping up with my sleep. You're, this is Wednesday. It's the podcast is supposed to be out already, girl, okay? So your character is what makes you beautiful. It is why human beings can get past extreme disfigurement. It's why we can move past what people would say is so ugly. If your character shines through, we don't notice. We don't. It just becomes another feature, another option of how to look in the world. Ultimately, like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If we're being very serious, if we're being very serious about what is ugly, it really doesn't have to do with looks. Only when we're being very shallow, which is very unserious, can we argue that looks matter. But looks, how you physically look, is very shallow. Now, I'm talking about aesthetic. I'm talking about features. I'm talking about body types. I am not talking about the relationship you're having with that body. Because remember, if you physically abuse your body to the point where it shines through your character, it will also look ugly. That's why some fat people are attractive and some skinny people are attractive and not attractive. It's why some fat people are attractive and not attractive, right? It's not the fatness or the skinniness. It's why you're fat or skinny. It's the relationship you're having with your body. Admit it to me. Say it out loud with me. Come on, guys. Is Eugenia Cooney attractive? Sometimes when she's in the light of her personality, yes. Minus the fact that she's 
dying in front of us, right? Is an extremely fat person attractive in front of us? Sometimes, yes, they shine through. Sometimes Boogie is lovable and we love him. And then sometimes his personality shines through and his character shines through. And he's not, he's ugly and we don't want him. And the same way Eugenia gets so many hate messages about how ugly she looks, what you're really saying is that her her character feels ugly because it feels dishonest. Even Jeffree Star in his uniqueness is very ugly to some people and very hot. But also they're counting their bias towards him, the way they feel about this man, right? The way they feel about Jeffrey is what makes him ugly or not. But then if they like him, he's hot. If they don't like him, he's ugly. And then there's the other side of it, which is like, I don't even know this person. I'm just judging them. What are you judging them on? What criteria are you judging them against? And then ultimately, what criteria are you judging yourself against? Help me. I feel ugly all the time. That doesn't sound like a physical problem. That sounds like mental health or a relationship with your consciousness or introspection. I feel ugly all the time is not about your body. It could be about the relationship you're having with your body, which is really about the relationship you're having with yourself. Your body is just a boat. It's like a, it's imagine it like a ship and it's holding your consciousness as it like moves through the world. You are not upset because you look ugly. You're upset because you feel ugly because the relationship, your consciousness doesn't feel solid and foundationed. You're not ugly. You just don't have a relationship with your consciousness. I wrote down people love who you are, right? And sometimes when we don't love who we are, we can't even love the people around us. So much of ugliness extends past the physicality, so much of most of it, right? Because again, if you have a relationship with your consciousness, you're bound to treat your body better and you're bound to look better and you're bound to groom better and then you're bound to present better. And all of us are average-ish, right? Most of us are sitting in the average. And so most of us feeling ugly is a reflection of the relationship we're having with ourselves and then the relationship we're having with others. Think about how much we self-sabotage because we feel ugly right? It's like self-inflicted wounds, the irony. Everyone can be ugly and everyone can do ugly things because they feel ugly. It's so, it's so hard. It's like a person starts sleeping with a married person because they feel so ugly and the only person who pays attention to them is married. So they go, I need to do whatever it takes just to feel beautiful for a day. And in turn, they do something ugly to feel beautiful and it's a band-aid, it's a cope. I feel ugly inside. Let me go get plastic surgery so I can feel pretty for the moment. And I come home and I still feel ugly as the lip fillers are like, you know, doing their thing on my face. Or you could have a relationship where you're seeking out healthy relationships because you're looking for something beautiful, because you have a beautiful relationship with yourself. Or you can get plastic surgery because it's fun and exciting and something new like dyeing your hair and it's like, why not? Let's, why not have fun? But if you're doing it to feel less ugly, then you are denying a very specific relationship with your consciousness, which is the radical acceptance that you are going to die and you are floating energy in the universe where these atoms that are crashing up against each other, right? We're just like energy being recycled. It's why if you go to some of the most like earthy, down to earth, wonderful, no makeup, no products, just natural people, they're some of the happiest people you know. Because in some ways they've radically accepted that they're just here for a moment and they're so honored by that presence of just existing that they're not worried about anything else. Now, I'm not that person and you're not that person. I'm wearing mascara right now. I'm wearing lipstick. To be fair, this is my makeup for the for my live streams and my podcast. I don't usually wear makeup every day. I don't. But I do wear hair product because as much as I love my natural hair, I do like it to look a little bit more organized. And I think that's fair. You can be natural and organized. You can care about how you look and be natural, right? But not if you're... I'm a natural, so I'm better than you because I don't care about plastic surgery and I don't care about makeup. That's ugly. 
If you're one of those natural people that's like, I'm natural because I'm better than you because I'm not insecure enough to get plastic surgery, that's ugly. You're being ugly right now. But if you're like, yeah, dude, you know, I thought about wearing makeup and I love that people do it, but I just feel like better in my skin when I don't. So I'm chilling. That's kind of beautiful. It's the way we approach things. It's not, it's not anything else. Ugliness is our relationship with our character. Or it's distortion because of mental illness and you need help, right? But if it's not mental health, it's a relationship you're having with yourself. It's so clear to me as I move forward in my own journey and as I look back on the Brittany that felt so much pressure to perform, and I do feel pressure to perform now. It's always going to be there. You're a YouTuber. Look a certain way. Uh, dress a certain way. Have lighting a certain way. Have an aesthetic a certain way. Attract a certain audience. Perform, perform, perform. I hold on to authenticity while I'm not at work to the best of my ability. And that version of Brittany feels and knows that she's not ugly because I have a great relationship with my consciousness. And I know no matter how many comments I got on the internet of people saying she looks like a man, get a nose job. What they're really saying is like, I don't find you attractive and I need you to be attractive for me. And that's kind of ugly. It's very ugly to me, whether you're a hippie girl who's telling women not to get plastic surgery because like you're better than them. Or if you're a guy on the internet telling women to get plastic surgery to be pretty for them, if you are demanding other people dress themselves so they're not ugly and you don't have to deal with them, that's pretty ugly. Let people feel good in their skin. Let people be pretty how they feel pretty. And then ultimately, only the people will know if they're really having that relationship with themselves. You know when you're coping. Come on, be real with me. You know when you're coping. The irony is like we're all coping in some way. So the, the question is how are we coping and how do we stop? Are you coping by saying you're the natural hippie chick who thinks everyone's ugly because they get plastic surgery? That's a cope. You're not really happy. Are you the guy who's coping because you're like, if only she was pretty, man. That's a cope, right? Pretty people, happy people, beautiful people. They know people are not really ugly. I don't really think people are ugly. I only think people are ugly if we're going to adhere to the construct of ugliness. If we're going to rank people from beautiful to ugly, I think it's very easy. You look at them like you would look at a flower and just go, okay, look, this flower is better looking, this flower this. It's very easy to me, but it's very shallow. And it's not really the question we're asking. We're not really asking people in the moment of ranking beauty and, and prettiness anything profound. We are only objectifying people for a moment based off a construct of beauty. But genuinely, in my most reflective and introspective self, like in that Brittany, I don't believe in ugliness. Ugly people only exist because of the relationship they're having with their consciousness. Or if we're being shallow, like I said, and we're rating you based off of like, aesthetics <clears throat> which is not the full person right this is very important so when you judge yourself and you say I feel ugly you can know why you feel ugly is it because you're having a bad mental health day you're lacking in the relationship with your consciousness or you're judging yourself superficially which is fine and you're saying man I look ugly today my sister and I send each other snapchats trying to look our physically ugliest to one another which makes us laugh which makes us realize we're not ugly because we're being funny and we're having fun with it. We realize in those moments by physically distorting our body to feel or appear ugly, we actually feel beautiful because we know that we know it's just funny. But then sometimes, sometimes we call each other and we're like, hey, like I don't want to be shallow, but like I'm balding. What do I do about that? Do I do something about it? Should I do anything about it? Should I be sad about it? And then we have those conversations. I feel shallow. Does it matter that I'm going bald? No. In a universe where we're just floating energy? Absolutely not. In a superficial world where we're competing with other people to be seen on the internet? Maybe. And then I have to ask myself, what do I genuinely care about? I care about maintaining my joy. 
which means I have to be realistic with the idea that I want to be presentable to the internet and maintain my job. But the Brittany that lives at home and the Brittany that's married and the Brittany that has a family, no one cares that she's going bald. And she really doesn't care either. We are many versions of ourselves. So make sure you know which version of you is feeling ugly. And if it's every part of you, start chipping away and getting those parts of you to feel comfortable with yourself again. I always feel ugly, help. Sounds pretty human, right? No judgment. We all feel ugly sometimes. That's my podcast. I don't even know how long I just spoke. Probably, what, 20 minutes? Either way, I hope this made sense. I'm glad you wrote me that message because I think it's important. And ultimately, none of this matters. We're all going to die. None of this matters. We're all going to die. No one's ugly. It's just the relationship you're having with your consciousness. Okay? All right, guys. Talk to you guys soon. If you guys are interested, I have merch out. Uh, Would you see this? Human's going to human. I have a sweater. I have mugs. Hello, ma'am. If you guys are interested, links down below for that merch. I really do appreciate it. And thanks to everyone who's already bought stuff. I've been seeing your messages and I really do. Thank you so much. I I appreciate it so much. Okay, Okay, with that said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. And yeah. Okay. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.